What had happened some years previously in Athens on the 25th of March, he was getting dressed to go somewhere, he was putting on his shoes, and he suddenly left his body. And he found himself above the parade with all the aircraft whizzing past him and looking down. And he tried to um, get back into his body, but he couldn't do that. So let's give him a very warm up. Oh, good evening. So I would like to share with you my way, personal way, which means that may not work for you, so I only can talk about myself, my personal way, my insight to happiness. The first time I met Manuel was after a, a very sad event in my life. I broke up with somebody who I cared for a lot. And I had a friend who said to me, why don't you come with me to a, a seminar with Manuel Schock. In fact, she was teasing me that you have some shock treatment because she told me that he reads auras. And I thought, well, that, that's interesting. I hadn't actually met anybody who read auras before. So I arrived at the Gulandri Center and registered, and um, it's in a room down below. And um, you have a length of stairs which you have to walk down. And, and she said to me, that's Manuel sitting at the bottom of the stairs. So I, I thought, oh my God, this is awful. He's going to read my aura and he's going to see everything that I don't want to show. At the, the very beginning of our relationship, we have been for holidays in Samos. We were nicely, totally in love, very, very strongly in love, uh, which kept, I must say, until the end of uh, being together. And um, suddenly I said, you know, why don't you read my aura? Manuel's biological mother got pregnant out of marriage. And um, the father immediately that he found out she was pregnant just left her. When my mother was pregnant with me, that was 1946, no one was allowed to know because she was 18 years old. So for example, when she was in the seventh month pregnant, she tried to escape and she went to a lake, the lake in Lucerne in Switzerland, and she tried to kill herself. I met my real mother only when I was 38. He was then given up for, to one of those foundations for adoption, so he went into a, a home where he had a very unpleasant experience. It was run by, by nuns, basically. The first thing I remember, that every day we were chained in the beds. I threatened them with knives and a whole string of things. What I remember is that we were every day beaten up. What I remember is that at night, sometimes one of the nurses would come with a knife and say, if you don't behave the next day, we will kill you. childhood gave him the possibility because it was so difficult and because he couldn't hold to something else a mother that would be caring or I don't know who that would be there caring to save him and it was so difficult in this home he was living he describes and I think that's very correct that he there already, he developed this, which became the very central thing of his um, work, time therapy, of giving up resistance. If you come in a home, if you are beaten up, if you don't get food, if you are tortured, if you are chained every day, I should be a criminal. What happened that I didn't become a criminal? Another part in me started to wake up, a part which was not frightened by the mind, by what was coming towards me, a part which is not 
conscious on the brain level. Whatever they do, if I do not get in a fight, in a resistance, they cannot really hurt me. You know, you have to see who he was. He was an, an extraordinary individual. Uh, for instance, he could tell when one of these nuns um, or one of the workers there in the home was having a hard time at home with their husband. And um, although he was, she was threatening him with a knife, he could see that in fact she was really unhappy as a person. So it didn't bother him. He just saw the unhappiness and felt sorry for her, felt compassion for her. In the morning, one of the nurses comes in. I look at her and I see around her whatever, you know, you, didn't, you don't have words and say this is an aura or this is a magnetic field or whatever. You just see around her a picture. The picture was, I re remember very clearly, her husband beating her up. In the picture I saw that has happened the night before. And from one second to the other I realized the woman is not against me. The woman is not violent towards me because of me. She is violent, aggressive, because she is unhappy from what has happened to her. How can you then still blame her? Manuel was there until six years old, and he decided at six that she needed to get out. So on on a visit of a family that came looking, they wanted to adopt a child. After that, Manuel had a, a fairly normal life. And then at the age of 12, he was sent off to a school somewhere else. And there he started once again to, to get back what he had lost from, from six to 12. Manuel, right from day one, could see auras. Uh, he thought this was uh, a normal thing for, for most people, that they could see auras. He didn't realize that this was special. Um, he, he developed this later on in life when uh, he went and studied with um, a, a Danish guy who uh, could also see auras and he learnt to understand what the colors meant. He's a remarkable healer from Switzerland, Manuel Schock. He's also the director of the Institute of Time Therapy in Zurich, Athens and London. He developed, while he was here in Greece actually, uh, time therapy. It's called time therapy because it deals with time. And uh, time is the way the mind thinks. Manuel said that the past creates the future, which is exactly what happens. So we need to see what actually is happening over time and how we keep repeating the same patterns of behavior at certain events. I feel so blessed, so blessed that life brought me together with him to share that in such a deep way and um, to live it in our private life. We lived time therapy that was the highest um, thing that could happen in my life. The last day I saw him, actually it was the last evening I saw him. We were in, um, in Switzerland, one of the groups he ran, which was a week of basically of his talks and meditation. And it was very intensive. We had all night meditation sessions and Manuel had suggested that he would try to ride or surf, as he put it, energy. He asked us at um, some point to do an exercise which created, a, if you like, an energy spin in the middle of the room, which was visible. I mean, we were in meditation, eyes shut, but you could still see this pillar of white energy turning. I think he, he, um, 
he rode it, he surfed it. But um, when he got, came back, um, he fell into a kind of coma, which he, he didn't recover from. So the last we saw of him was unfortunately being taken out by an ambulance. The whole atmosphere went absolutely still. It was the most extraordinary sensation. I mean, it's just like time just didn't exist anymore. It was just like a frozen moment and everything was still. And he died the next morning. In my view, Manuel had bliss most of the time.